The last thing we're going to do is we're going to add the tooltip. And once we hover over the bars, we're going to create a tooltip that will show up at the top of each bar and give us information about the bar, which is the percentage, and that will um, help our user interact with our chart. Inside bar chart component, go to the bottom of the component where we return the JSX code and let's add the tooltip as an element. We're going to wrap it with an element of type div and we'll give it an ID of tooltip and also I'm going to give it a class name of tooltip. This way I can um, create a SAS um, style um, instead of putting the code here. And then inside of our tooltip, I'm going to create another div and I'm going to give it a name of a class name of tooltip framework. And that will hold um, that label that you saw of the name of the tooltip. And inside that div, I'm going to put a span element and the span element is going to hold the actual text, the name of the framework. And you can close that, collapse that, and then um, the other element we need is we need to um, put the value of that framework. So we're going to create a div and let's call it tooltip-value. And inside, we'll put another span to hold the text, and I'll give it an ID of count. And add a percentage, um, so it's going to show the percentage. So now that we have the element, we can start work on the interaction. If we go back into our um, memorize update, callback, we already done the peripheral. And what we can do is we can add our interaction um, under uh, the peripherals. So what we can do is we can um, use D3 and then we can select the element we created, which was the ID was tooltip. Um, and then what we can do, we can start handling um, mouse events, right? So what we can do is we can um, create a rectangle around our component and listen to mouse events. So the way we're going to do it, we're going to do D3, select all, and we're going to select all the rectangle, meaning all the beans, and we're going to listen to mouse events from those uh, beans. So every time the user mouse enter, mouse leave those beans, we can um, display that tooltip. So the way we're going to do it is we're just going to use on mouse enter event and then we'll create a handler. Let's call it mouse on mouse enter. And we can do the same once the user exit. So once the user leave that bean will handle will handle the on mouse leave and then we can let's just create those function so function on mouse enter and it's going to expect an event and it's going to expect a, a datum which is our data type that we're going to be passing and the same for on mouse leave and for mouse leave it's pretty simple what we need to do is we need to um, just um, style the opacity of the tooltip to zero so when we first start um, with our element that tooltip we're going to set the opacity to zero so you don't see it on the screen and then once the mouse leave we need to put the opacity back to zero so we can create a constant and call it tooltip and that's going to equal our selector 
to tip. And then we can, on mouse leave, we can just call the tool tip and set the style of the opacity to zero. Okay, so we have the mouse leave event and we have the mouse enter event. So um, I have a typo, it's mouse leave. It has to be um, camel case. So mouse enter, mouse leave, okay. And then on now we just need to um, to handle um, mouse enter. Now um, D3 changed the way they handle events and they made it much more easier in version six, which which is the version we're using. So if we want to get the current position of the X and Y, we would just do something like this. We'll do the constant X and Y from D3 pointer, and that will um, give us. If we pass in the event, that will give us the position of the X and Y. It's going to give us the client X and Y. So this is just for you to remember. We don't need to use it, but it's good to really know that and remember that. And, um, you know, since they changed the event mechanism and how it's being handled, it, they, they just made it much more easier to work with version uh, versus uh, earlier versions of D3 if you ever worked with it. Now what we want to do is the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to set the text on our um, for the value so we can call the tooltip and we can select the count element that we set and then we can set the text to dtom value so that will set our um, you know the count and now the next thing we need to do is we need to set, we need to figure out where to position those, um, the tooltip. So we need to figure out the, the Y and the X. So it's called bar Y and bar X. So we need to figure out how, how to position it. And that's a little, you know, it, um, we have to put some thoughts into it. So what we need to do is a few things for the, bar y we need to first figure out uh, the location of the bar and the location of the bar we can figure out using the the scales and the y scale for the y and then we can uh, pass in the um, y accessor with the d tom and that's gonna give us the location of the y and then we need to do a couple more things we need to add the dimensions of the margin top and we need to add the dimensions of the margin bottom so if we do all of that together that's going to give us the location of the y now for the location of the x um, it's really similar what we need to do is we need to call scales use the x scale this time use the um, use the DTOM um, of the framework and once we um, we use the DTOM of the framework and um, we need to do um, we need to add a couple more things we need to add the properties of the dimensions of the margin left and we need to add the properties of the dimension of the margin right. Then the last thing we need to do is we need to, um, because it's when we hover over, it's going to give us one bar before. So, um, so what we need to do is we, I'm sorry, we want to center it in the middle of the bar. So to center it in the middle of the bar, what we can do is we can um, divide it, divide the bandwidth of the bar by four, and that's going to position it for us um, pretty much in the middle. So if I do scales that x scales that bandwidth, 
and I'll divide it by 4, that's going to give us, position it in the middle instead of, um, you know, giving us a position of the, uh, of the beginning. We have to add TS ignore because it doesn't like it. Um, we haven't defined it the DTOM. So now that I have the X and the Y, um, the next thing we need to do is we need to um, calculate the location. So to calculate the location, we can call the tooltip with the style and we can set the transform and translate it. Can put it and translate it um, using uh, the calculate method. So we can do a translate, and inside we can um, we can set we can have it calculated so it's in the middle. So to calculate it that it's in the middle, what we can do is we can set the minus fifty percent, and then add the X bar and of course we need to put pixel and we need to do the same for the um, for the Y location we need to do a calculate of a hundred plus the bar Y And that's going to be in pixel. And those calculation, you know, this way we're starting from the whole screen, and then we, um, you know, we reduce the the y to position it right on top of our bar. Let me see that it's got close right, looking good. Then. We also need to set the opacity because we're gonna um, we're not gonna display it when you first uh, load the page. So we need to set just like we set the um, the opacity um, on mouse sleeve. We need to set the opacity to one once you hover over um, any of the bars. Let's check our code. So if we go to localhost. Hmm. It doesn't work. Let's see why. Ah, the um, the mouse event has to be lowercase. Let's refresh it. Here you go. It looks like it's work, but it's missing the framework. Let's take a look. If you remember, we have um, we added an element that we called. Um, framework, right? So we also need to set it up on the uh, mouse enter event. So once the mouse enter event, um, we need to add another code to handle. Uh, we'll select um, the framework element selector, and we'll set the text to the DTOM. dot framework there you go let's take a look there you go now it works the only thing that I haven't showed you that's working behind the scene is if you look at the SAS file I created a um, few elements I created the tooltip um, CSS and I created um, that carrot that you see once you hover over a bar element as a carrot. So you could see the code here. This is just um, a tooltip and a carrot. You can see that the opacity is zero once you know the element first entered the screen. And I'm using absolute positioning. And also take a look that the my Z index is 999 because I want it to be in front of other elements. So to make sure it's in front of other elements what I've done is first I positioned it um, right after the div and I gave it the layer as a 99 to make sure that happened and I removed the uh, pointer event so once you um, hover over them it won't capture um, mouse events 
um, you can see we can actually hover over the bars and we see the data right above that and it's just another layer for the user so it's going to be easy to interact with our chart now if we look at the actual result from the chart it's actually interesting because react is coming up second than jquery but notice that we have Gatsby, which is a React-based framework um, set up um, separately and also for Angular, Angular coming up third with 25.1% but we have AngularJS so AngularJS is the uh, previous version of Ang Angular set as a separate framework so because of that you know those results if you take the data and play around with the data we can really see different types of, of results if you add um, the percentage of Gatsby as part of um, React that will change that so looking at the chart it really gives us an idea of the most popular framework so all the framework that um, went above our mean line it means that our, really those are the top um, framework out there for the year 2020 um, and then you can also see with the .NET that they have the .NET Core at 19.1 and they have the ASP.NET is 21.9 so um, obviously um, .NET developers um, you know take significant chunk of the framework and the you know the people that building um, um, code um, in 2020 so but you know using this chart it really gives us a nice way to kind of Look at the data and and see where we at in, in where we at in terms of framework for the year 2020.